Why is the Dominican Republic and Haiti so different? Royal family, today we're gonna figure that out. Engage. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. My name is Rock Land. I'm a travel advisor. Passport King shows you samples of travel destinations so you can make an informed decision when you're picking your next vacation. Hispaniola, an island that was home to the Tiano people, was taken in two very different directions by the two European gangs that were sent to conquer them. DR is a top-rated tourist destination today, while Haiti continues to struggle and remains one of the world's poorest countries. Why is that? The two countries have incredibly different histories and cultural identities. The citizens of both sides of this island are a mix of natives to Hispaniola, European colonizers, and the people from Africa that the colonizers forced into slavery and brought to the island to do all the work that the Europeans were too lazy to do. Today, the two countries have very different political and economic systems as well as vastly different reputations on the world stage. When it comes to which side of Hispaniola is worth a visit, so what makes them different? Why are facts about these two countries so conflicting, sugar-coated, and hard to come by? In this video, I I briefly examine a few key factors that led to their very different reputations. I am neither from Haiti or the Dominican Republic. I'm just a travel agent that gets asked this question all the time, so I figured I'd answer it in one video. Here are the answers I found through research, testimonies, and cross-referencing. Over 400 years ago, Spain invaded what we now call the Dominican Republic. Christopher Columbus was pretty much lost at sea when he landed up on Hispaniola. He was originally looking for a new route to India and China. This murderous bozo is also well known for thinking that that the people in America were actually Indians because he still thought he was in India. The Dominican Republic was colonized by Spain. In 1492, much like his visits to other countries, he decided that everyone who lived on this island was inferior to him and to the residents of Spain. With heartlessness and viciousness, he colonized the entire island, enslaving all of its Taino residents and destroying their history to a point that no one really remembers what Hispaniola was originally called. Spain also brought in the enslaved people from Africa to do all of the heavy lifting. Spain Spain was nowhere near finished raping and pillaging all of the desirable resources when the south side of Hispaniola was colonized in 1659 by a much stronger invading force from France. Instead of completely decimating Christopher Columbus's army, the French armada led by Napoleon's brother Charles Le Kirk pushed Spain to the west side of the island, which is now known as Haiti to the east. After an almost impossible battle, Haiti won the war for independence on January 1st, 1804. The victory was so monumental that many people in the world actually consider magic in the form of voodoo as being a driving force to victory by the much poorer and less militarized slaves from the African and Taino coalition led by Toussaint L. Overture. But France was still tight. Realizing they couldn't defeat Haiti in combat, they pretty much sued Haiti for the profits being made on the island. Haiti has been paying France ever since, which pretty much brought state building and progress to a halt for over 200 years. So today's government. While both countries have been ruled by authoritarian regimes, in recent history, during those periods, they follow opposite political paths. The U.S. occupied DR in order to help end the totalitarian dictatorship by Rafael Trujillo, who was the last of DR's dictators, got got in 1961. In 1963, Juan Bosch was voted in to be president with an actual election, but Bosch was tossed out the same year via a coup. There was another military coup two years later by the Bosch team to regain power. Since then, power exchanges have been more civilized and less bloody in DR. Haiti has seen a parade of similar leaders since the revolution in 1804. Today's Haiti is in what is called a semi-presidential republic. The elections are a result of citizens voting, but multiple coup attempts, internal conflicts, and regime changes keep this government in a dynamic state. Today's leaders in both countries are far more liberal and seem to believe in a more fair distribution of power between the citizens and the leadership. Economically, Haiti is very poor with a GDP per capita capita of $1,010. In contrast, the Dominican Republic has a GDP that's hovering around 7,000 bucks. But Haiti has a friend in the U.S. when it comes to exports. The U.S. receives knitted clothing and fish tariff-free. Farming, which is at constant odds with Haiti's natural disasters, helps Haiti produce and export fruit, oils, and coffee. But working Dominicans have significantly higher incomes than Haitians. After a significant 6.7% fall in 2020 thanks to the slow mining profits, the DR's economy grew 12% just one year later. Although DR is still the seventh poorest country in North America, it has experienced 25 years of economic growth. It's one of the fastest growing economies in the Caribbean, but yet only 33% of women and 61% of men are currently in the workforce. The weather in Hispaniola. DR also got lucky when it came to weather on this small island. It benefits from the northeast trade winds that brings in the rain. 
Rain is essential for agriculture and it keeps the Dominican Republic's residents farming at higher rates. The hurricane season is at the end of the year. Now when it comes to weather in Haiti, Haitians had to deal with decades of massive erosion and rampant deforestation making the growth of crops very difficult. The mountain ranges that separate Haiti from the DR also blocks most of the rainfall from the east and it accounts for a Samaric climate, which makes the cultivation of infertile soil even worse. And Port-au-Prince, Haiti experienced massive destruction in 2010 when a 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck its capital. On August 16th, 2017, another earthquake with a 5.9 on the Richter scale struck in Port-au-Prince, but it wasn't as serious as that 7.0 joint. All right, now when it comes to today's living conditions, there are parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti that could be considered a real paradise. Millions of tourists who visit DR each year will vouch for its natural beauty while not realizing that Haiti offers the same island conditions. DR would probably have more infrastructure, which was funded by and specifically to support tourism. Since Spain left some natural resources in the aftermath of its exploits, DR was able to recover and become a striving country. Although many of them suffer financially, good portions of the citizens are educated and enjoy a higher life expectancy. The Dominican Republic has evolved positively thanks to the absence of tariffs and sanctions. But in Haiti, you will find more of what today's more experienced tourists are actually looking for untapped beauty in uncommercialized communities. Haiti has remained mostly rural and experiences hardly any of the touristic financial infusions other than the Labadee cruise ship stop. Instead of offering support emotionally and financially to its island neighbor, to make the entire island of Hispaniola the Caribbean powerhouse it probably would have been today if not for the European invasions, the Dominican government created even more separation this decade by amending its constitution to kick out the citizens of Haitian descent. Many say there were racial elements attached to this decision. Favoritism seemed to go to citizens that receive lighter skin and European facial features from decades of forced race mixing. Also, when Haitians were seeking refuge in DR after the earthquake, many Haitians and Dominicans pointed to skin color as a deciding factor on who could stay and who had to go back to the temporarily unlivable conditions. In conclusion, Sanctions from other countries and environmental disasters like numerous earthquakes and infertile soil are the number one and two reasons why Haiti is not the craved tropical destination like many parts of the Dominican Republic are. Of course, their history is more nuanced than what can be expressed in a video of this length. If you ask the residents of Haiti why they are behind the DR in economics, they will tell you the government. The current government hasn't done much to eliminate the historical setbacks that the country still feels from the colonial periods. Government corruption and the government's mishandling of money. It's been years since the last natural disaster in Haiti. Ignorant people will tell you that Haiti seems to never catch a break because of the color of most of its residents' skin. But this is ridiculous, mainly because racism itself is ridiculous. But also it's ridiculous because of how many Dominicans have the same dark skin color. I've heard a preacher on TV, the 700 Club guy, say once that Haiti was being punished by God for kicking out their French conquerors. I feel this notion is more ridiculous than racist. At the end of the day, both of these countries that make up Hispaniola are worth a visit. You can and probably will experience many positives and negatives no matter which side of Hispaniola you visit. Don't let international propaganda steer you away. One more thing, this video is talking about like conquerors and, and slavery and things like that, so it may be demonetized. So if you have a heart, make sure that you hit the super chat button at the bottom. That way I can still get paid for this video and still be able to uh, talk about the things that you guys really ask me about. Now, don't let international propaganda steer you away from exploring either of these beautiful nations. Go anyway like a king of passport kings.